Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup, and we are starting today with Linux news. Of course, if you're not watching this live, this is the last one to get published on Sunday, but uh, we're going to start in with some Linux news, what's going on in the Linux world. First up, GNOME 46 Alpha desktop is released for public testing. There are a few new things. We have uh, headless remote logins via GDM, so so, you know, new ways of using GDM, you can still log in with uh, SSH. Uh, we have a new prompt. We have, a, we have another terminal emulator. Only this is a built-in no-map terminal emulator, so I think that means it sucks. I'm not sure. Like, the problem I have with no-map applications is they have no flexibility, no settings, no options, and they are all extraordinarily limited. I, I think GNOME sucks, if nothing else, for its applications. It feels kind of like like cheap Chinese knockoff Linux. I don't know. Uh, we have built-in support for WebP images, so that's good. There is a lot in this article. We're not going to go through all of it. Uh, Nautilus Files does um, does have a confirmation when you're creating a password-protected zip archive, so you don't accidentally type in the wrong password. So you have a few things like that. Of course, uh, also Nautilus has the uh, easier ability to customize the folders. That's something we talked about briefly a few shows ago. Uh, they do have some new uh, shell components. They have a new um, uh, a new system monitor. And, of course, we're going to be talking about another system monitor coming out for it. So there's all sorts of system monitors coming out. And uh, that one there is based on GTK4. And uh, here we have uh, some updates to the web browser. So redesigned Zoom buttons inspired by Lupe. We have uh, there's just so much stuff in here. I'm going to get completely lost in what's where. GNOME cal uh, Calculator 46 received the ability to allow subtracting the search in the unit selections support for Argentine peso currency, the Troy ounce, as well as newly supported unit, the ability to reload conversion rates. Okay, so better information for doing calculations of currencies. We have the, uh, oh my Lord, there's so much stuff in here. Uh, improved uh, margins for right to left languages. We have, uh, uh, this is a big one, online accounts has been removed from the initial setup and to use it now utilizes the default web browser for authentication. So they suggest this is a more secure method. I have questions. I wonder if you change your default browser, is this going to change anything? Uh, I'm not sure. It does support out of the box card dav and cal dav now. So in theory, any application no running within the GNOME ecosystem that supports CalDAV or CardDAV uh, can utilize this. So if you do want to sign in with a generic Car CalDAV or CardDAV, that's actually useful if you're running email uh, through cPanel or something because cPanel does provide both of those features, uh, depending, of course, on your host. They removed last FM and uh, media server providers were removed as well. So a few things just kind of streamlining it. And uh, you can go ahead and uh, download on a few different places. It's slated for the next uh, the next beta of uh, Fedora, and there are a few other places to get it as well. Uh, but there's just there's a lot in there, and I kind of fumbled my way through that. It sounded a whole lot better in my head last night when I was extremely exhausted reading all of the articles. But there was literally a lot of stuff in there, and. A lot of it's just some some streamlining things, some changes to GTK4, and just other other things. Mostly preparing it for more like a, some options for cloud infrastructure as well. And of course, we do have a new system monitor, which is an extension for GNOME. So this one here, this guy's saying this is the best one he's ever seen, and. What this one is, this is the Astro Monitor. It's going to give you all of your readouts in your GNOME panel at the top. And then you can hover over that and then you can get the uh, you can get some some extra information. These let me see if I can get these images bigger. So you can kind of get a visual for the RAM usage, CPU usage, network usage, and then you can just hover over that just to see more information, see the processes and things like that. So this is actually a a really nice option. Maybe they should have said, hey, let's just dump our crappy GNOME-based one and go with this one because it seems to be a whole lot better. But, you know, that's the name of the game for GNOME. Let's just 
cut out useful features and make a streamlined system with no settings and no options. So, you know, it drives people nuts who actually want to have some degree of control over their system. I mean, that's why I switched to Linux. I don't know about you. <laughs> well, you gamers out there and other wine aficionados, uh, do you stir your wine cup when you're just installing it? Well, 9.0 is released. We have more changes to Wayland. We have experimental Wayland graphics design, um, uh, graphics drivers. And we also have support for ARM64 EC architecture. So this is, uh, I had no idea what that is. I had to look that one up. So uh, that is an architecture for Intel ARM processors to still be able to run in an emulation mode, 64-bit uh, processors. So it allows you to run, run, wine and emulate intel based applications on an arm processor uh that's my understanding but i'm not a gamer and i don't use wine a whole lot so um that's what my understanding is they do have experimental graphics drivers for wayland of course they are not uh in uh, not configured by default but you just need to go into your registry edit and you need to modify this command down here to get that working we have more support for a few more graphics drivers and uh, more directx support things like that so there are a lot of improvements for anybody that does use wine there might be a reason particularly if you've been having an issue with wine on wayland based systems it might be worth using experimenting and seeing if you can get that to work so that's pretty cool and next up is OpenSUSE Leap 16 has confirmed it will be based on SUSE's Adaptable Linux program. So the uh, uh, Adaptable Linux program, or the ALP, is a new model for OpenSUSE, which is effectively based on a uh, on an immutable system. So the tumbleweed is going to remain how it is. The, the leap, it looks to my understanding, is going to be moving towards. Uh, towards a an immutable type system. So for those that want that, the other big changes that this is going to bring to us is uh, Lux disk encryption via TPM without snap support. Thank you, Ubuntu. And uh, there's a few other changes in there that, that they're working on. But uh, I did actually dig through the rabbit hole, digging down into exactly what all adaptable Linux platform is. Mostly they're, they're creating an immutable containerized type system, which is good for desktop or cloud deployment. So the next version of OpenSUSE Leap is going to be based on that. Um, I kind of want to make a joke here, but we're not under banned news right now. <sighs> Not immutable in OpenSUSE. But I'll leave you to your imagination. Uh, but with that, um, Canonical's Steam app is actually causing headaches for Valve. So, of course, Valve is the one that creates Steam. But then, of course, Ubuntu really wants everybody and their brother to use Snap. And so for some of the more reputable developers like Valve, they're like, hey, we'll do your Steam packaging for you. Well, the problem is they had to modify something to get the Steam package to work. And, uh, of course, since Ubuntu is more caring about, hey, how many Steam packages do we have, not about the final user experience, it's caused a lot of issues when you're running the Snap version of Steam. And then the problem is everybody is trying to leave bug reports on Valve's website. And Valve is saying, we don't control the this, this Snap for Steam. Uh, that's Ubuntu. You got to go annoy them about it. And uh, if enough people annoy them about it, they, uh, they'll they fix it. They tell you, actually, if you're having issues with the Snap version of Steam, to either use the repository version or the Flatpak version, which the Flatpak version is also not specifically run by Valve, but at least it's something that it tells you that inside of the release notes. Whereas Snap does not actually tell you that Snapcraft, not Valve, is the one who actually packages the Snap for the uh, for the Snap store. And so everybody's leaving complaints and bug reports on the Snap version, which apparently is broken somewhere along the line. And uh, But eh, Ubuntu doesn't really care. So that kind of is the direction that uh, they're going with. <laughs> Well, if you want to help support the channel, we do have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. That supports all my work on all of my different channels. And so you can jump on over there. Uh, over there, we do have... Um and we do have science fiction short stories. I did work through last weekend and got the short story with the audiobook posted right on time. And uh, you can head on over to Patreon or any of the other support networks. But uh, we're talking Patreon here. So in these short stories, we're taking 
relevant contexts to modern stories like modern modern technology and we're seeing what some of the downsides of some of these technologies are and so that's what our short story series is about so you can get all those for uh being a patreon supporter of any amount uh patreon.com slash t-o-m-m with that thanks for watching and we'll see you all next time thank you for watching this video from switched to linux this channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.